Hi guys, welcome back. Wow, week three, it is flying. And uh, I'm sure you've been able to do lots of things uh, in isolation. I'm actually calling this series the isolation series. Um, that's a bit different. I wasn't expecting ever to call a series that, but uh, I'm just sort of doing that so I know where to find it on my computer. Today, I thought what we'd do is look at the parable of the two builders, which I'm gonna talk about. Uh, and just share some really simple things. It's not gonna be in depth, just some simple things that again, I'm hoping will encourage you. I just wanna say thank you to those people who have informed me through various ways that this is blessing you, it's encouraging you, it's giving you words of hope. Uh, so thank you, I really do appreciate that. But I, more than that, just pray that the Holy Spirit is ministering to you. That's really my passion. So before I do that, I just a few thoughts about the current season. Uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm constantly saying, Lord, what, what's happening? What are we up to? What are you trying to do? So I just wanted to just share these with you before we even get into the message today. Just some thoughts about what's happening right now. And the first one is, uh, I felt the Lord say to me, he's brought the church into a forced fast. Now that's a really interesting term, but a forced fast. Um, and what do I mean by that? I, and I just wrote this. I want to read it to you because I wrote it and, it, and, it, and it, it's really important I get this to you. A time the Holy Spirit is stripping back all the peripherals. So I looked up the word peripheral because coming from my uh, local high school, Ken Hooker, you know that's a big word for a guy like me. So peripheral means something that is peripheral is not as important as something else. So the Lord, the Holy Spirit, is stripping back the stuff that isn't important and taking us back to the basics, right? That's what the Holy Spirit is doing right now. So you and I may feel like this is, you know, it is a terrible time. Yes, it is. And, and uh, you know, we're, but, but what's happening is there's a stripping back and, and things like conferences. You know, the church community right now hasn't got any conferences to go to. So if you're a conference junkie, you're in, you're in uh, you know, you're going through detox right now. Um, things like music, you know, um, you don't have the corporate setting, the, the great church music that we're all so accustomed to uh, live. So that's been stripped away from us. Um, the gathering, even just coming together, uh, has been stripped away from us. Um, and so if your Christianity has been built on the social connection uh, and not really the relationship with God, then right now there's a struggle and these are real things. Um, and, and I thought of this one, the feeding that's provided. You know, and so when you come to church, the feeding is given to you. It's almost, you know, it's handed to you. It's on the spoon. It's given to you. And you often just have to sit there. Now, look, I'm not saying any of these things are wrong, but I believe that the Lord's saying that's not the foundation of your Christianity. And that's really important. So all of these are being forced and you're fasting on those right now. The next one is, like I said before, we're getting taken back to the basics. So what are the basics? You and the word. You and the Word together, you and God spending time together. And I just wrote, practicing His presence. You know, what is it again to just be in His presence with everything else gone? Um, you know, for some, it's a real struggle because they've had all these peripherals. So here you are, you've got your Bible open, you know, the Word, you've got your notepad, you've got, you know, that's it. You just, God, I'm here, you're here and speak to me through your word. So, so we're getting taken back to basics. And the third one is, and this is more of a warning that I felt the Lord put in my heart. And that is that what happens is, as we're forced to fast, the warning is that we quickly try to fill that space with stuff. And I'm finding that right now. I'm gonna be really honest with you today. One of the concerns I have as I'm looking across, particularly our social media, uh, our platforms that we're able to come and, and do what we do, and this is a great thing. Uh, but the problem I'm finding, and my, my, my warning is going off, is that every day there is churches chucking stuff out there. Um, you know, I've seen churches doing something every morning, every lunchtime, every evening, seven days a week. Um, you know, and I feel as though, this is just my opinion, and I'll, you know, I'll put it to you, but I just believe that we're almost counteracting what the Holy Spirit's trying to do. 
um, because he's, he's not trying to take us completely away from church or his presence, no, but he's trying to get us to realise that we don't need that stuff. And so the church, the pastors, and I include myself with this, out of an insecurity or maybe a fear or what is going to happen to our people and, and we need to make sure everyone's safe and okay, we almost overcompensate. And we just put so much information and so much material that people are now again not learning to feed themselves, but they're accessing someone else feeding them constantly. So I just want to put that to you as part of the season you're in. Spend time with God. You know, maybe stop watching and being a part of everyone else's things every day of the week. And maybe just you and the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, just spending time together. So I just wanted to share that with you and just encourage you. That's my take on the season that we're in right now. And, and uh, you know, again, we don't know how long this is going to go for, but at the end of it, we want to come out different. You know, I believe that God wants to do that. So it's, it's incredibly uh, important. Well, right now we know that um, there is panic everywhere. Um, I was just looking at a whole lot of things, uh, and most of you would be aware of this, but panic buying is at, at an all-time high. Um, toilet paper is just, you know, it's worth thousands of dollars right now for a roll. It is crazy. Um, you know, we had a guy in New South Wales in one of our shopping centres get tasered uh, by the New South Wales police because he was um, angry about this situation with the toilet roll. Um, how many know that's probably a little bit of extreme panic? Uh, in Hong Kong, there was an armed robbery uh, with, with uh, some people over 600 toilet rolls. Um, so here we are now risking our lives over toilet rolls, just crazy stuff. Bunnings are now reporting that things like seedlings, uh, they can't keep up with the sale of seedlings for vegetables and those type of things. They're just running out the door. People are coming and buying all this, these seedlings. Um, another, another article I read said that baby chickens are now at a scarcity, that people are running to buy baby chickens. Now, you know, this is almost comical activity, to be totally honest with you. Number one, the seedlings will take some time to grow. Um, so by the time we probably come out of the other end of this virus, then the produce will be ready and we'll all want to go back to the supermarket. And the chickens are exactly the same unless you're going to eat McNuggets. And I just don't want to share that. I'm not going to leave that with you because I know that we'll have chicken lovers that are listening on. But, you know, these chickens will take some time to grow. So the amazing thing is everyone's becoming a farmer. And, um, you know, but, but all of this, I, I, went, I, I looked up and, and started to research, why is it when uh, a pandemic, uh, anything of this nature happens, that humans go into panic? And why is it that we begin to do these irrational things? And so at the end of it all of my research, most psychologists, psychiatrists will say that all of this is about a sense of control, that people are looking for something that they feel they can control the situation. In other words, their foundations are not strong. And so they begin to grab at different things to begin to feel like I'm safe. Thank God we have Jesus. Jesus is the anchor of our soul. And so we're able in the, in the most extreme of times to be able to go to him, have him in our life and be centered and solid on a foundation. And that is what I want to talk about today. I want to read to you this, uh, today from Matthew chapter 7, uh, starting in verse 24. Most of you would know this passage of scripture. And, you know, for those of you, I didn't, but grew up in Sunday school or kids church. This is often a story that's told, but there is just some great truth in it for where we are right now. It says in verse 24, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Now, you know, that's just such a simple little passage of scripture, but so relevant to many of us right now, as we live in this environment where people are panicking all around us. 
And I just, you know, it was like the Holy Spirit led me to this passage of scripture as I was going into the supermarket and all the meat was gone and all the chicken's gone and the long life milk's gone and the toilet paper's gone. And, you know, and, and people are just in this frenzy. The, the shop is filled with tension and strain. And I just got taken back to, to this passage of scripture. So here's a few things. The first one is what are the, what are the similarities between each of these, these situations? these two different scenarios. Well, the first one is they both built houses. That was similar. There was no problem. They seemed to be in the same location, uh, which is interesting. So it wasn't about the location and it wasn't about the design of the home. The, the third one is the houses were similar in, in the way they were, they were set up and the way that they were, were put together and built and all those sort of things. And here's the last one. They both experienced the same exposure to the weather. So the weather, the conditions that they were exposed to were exactly the same. And that's really important because right now in our, in our culture, in, in our nation right now and other nations of the world, no matter whether you're rich or poor, uh, you know, Australian, American, wherever, uh, we're all experiencing the same weather conditions. It's really interesting. Um, as you often hear, this virus doesn't uh, choose around those things. It affects everybody on every level. And so again, this is so applicable to us right now because this weather that was falling on these homes was the same for everybody. So here's a common denominator and, uh, and that's really powerful. Now, what was the difference between them? Well, it had to be the foundations. It was simply the foundations. It wasn't the house, house design. It wasn't the location. Um, it wasn't any of those things. It was the foundations that were different. The first one, the foundation was the sand. The sand, uh, let's talk about sand for a moment. Um, I, I don't like sand. Uh, some of you are beach people. Uh, as you can probably tell, I'm not really geared that way. Um, for me to be able to float on the water takes a seven foot five surfboard. Um, but uh, now, yeah, I'm not gonna tell you what I look like when I run towards the water, we'll leave that for another time. But, um, you know, sand, sand is, is just interesting. It's, it, so with this foundation with sand, it's, it's quick, all right? In other words, it's quick to build upon. It's not a whole lot involved with it, you just begin to build. It's easy, it doesn't take a lot of effort. It's unstable. To build anything upon sand is unstable. Another thought is it's ever-changing. It's moving all the time, very easily moved. And, you know, again, I want you to think to our climate right now, to, to the world that we're experiencing, what people are feeling. You know, I, I have the greatest of compassion uh, right now for people who don't know Jesus. Uh, I don't think they're crazy. I don't think they're silly people. I think that their, their foundation, the sand, is moving. And so again, as we heard from that quote around the psychologist, they are grasping at something to take control because they feel as though they're sinking. And so they're trying to hold on to something. And so we see that there, there is uh, instability. It's ever-changing. Uh, which, you know, sand is just, just the, has those dynamics. The second foundation that we read about is the rock. Now, the rock, the actual word for, uh, for this in the Greek doesn't just mean a, a small rock or a little rock. It actually talks about the bedrock. That's what it's talking about. Now, the bedrock is the furthest, the deepest place you can get down to. Uh, right now, in our city, we have a lot of construction. We have, we have freeways, highways that are being built right now uh, during this time of filming. And, uh, and you'll notice that when they're putting bridges particularly, and they're putting the, the, the piers, the pillars of those bridges, they're going right down to bedrock. And, uh, you know, and it, it, it's not easy work. They're, 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 they're drilling through, they're digging through, right down to the very base, underneath all of the, they go through so many layers to get to that bedrock. And, uh, and that's where the time is. You know, if you speak to any builder, they'll, they'll tell you very quickly that the foundation is where the most time is spent. And, uh, and when you're looking to get onto bedrock, it takes extra effort, extra money. And I've written a few words here. It takes sacrifice. It takes time. And there's digging involved. And no one likes digging. 
Um, I don't know if you've ever had to dig just a small hole. It is tragic and incredibly difficult. So, you know, here is this wise builder who's decided, let's forget the sand because it's moving, it's unstable, it's all those things. I'm going to go now for the rock, but the rock isn't sitting on the surface and easy to get to, but there is a sacrifice to go through the layer upon layers to get down to the bedrock. Once you get to the bedrock, that's where you put, um, you sink into and begin to build upon. And, uh, and I believe that when, when you see people, even in Christianity, and of course it's a little bit about the sower, the seed and the sower, but when you see people um, begin to build and then all of a sudden uh, over time they fall away from God or they go through a difficult time, often it's because they've built on the sand and haven't been discipled to the rock. And so this is really important. And right now we're seeing this stuff. You know, we're seeing in this, this uh, climate. So let's build on, this, on the rock. Let's decide to do that. Just a few thoughts. The trial exposes the foundations. You know, that, that's amazing. You and I can come together and, and have church and we can lift our hands and we can worship God and we can do all those things. We can quote scripture. We can even put Christian stickers on the back of our car. We can have fish stickers everywhere. We can do all sorts of stuff. But it's the trials that expose our true foundations. And, you know, during this period, all of us, I think, are being challenged about our foundations. You know, if right now you're in fear and anxiety and, and it's gripping you, then you have to revisit your foundation. It's not a negative thing. It's not a judgmental thing. It's just something the Holy Spirit is trying to reveal to us. And as I said early on, he's bringing us into a fast, a forced fast to get rid of the peripherals. Now, if we have, if we built our, our Christianity on those things, that's the sand. Um, but the Lord's saying, I, I want to strip that away from you and want you to build on solid rock. Just our relationship, our intimacy, you understanding my presence, my word. Just the simple, basic things. So the trial exposes the foundations. The parable was not about the homes or the locations, but the action of the builder. It was all about the builder. How did the builder build those foundations? Now, the thing is this, you can't expect other people to do that for you. And I suppose that is my warning, as I've mentioned earlier, about what's happening right now, because many of us are expecting and leaning on other people to develop our foundations. But that, that responsibility comes back to you and to, to, to me to actually decide what sort of foundation do we want. I want a foundation that's immovable. I want a foundation that's bedrocked in Jesus. I want a foundation that's strong and firm so that when the trials, when the winds and the rains and all those things come against us, that we'll actually stand strong. So maybe during this period, you're being exposed to your foundation. Maybe you're realizing, hey, I'm not as strong as I thought I was. Um, that's not a bad thing. Uh, it's actually a good thing because then once you can admit that and see it, you can begin to allow the Holy Spirit to bring healing to it. So I want to encourage you just through this simple teaching today that Jesus is your rock, that he wants to be that firm foundation in your life, that yes, the world right now is panicking and reaching out for ways of gaining control where Jesus is saying, let go and let me have the control. Trust that I'm in control. And it's a very different way of thinking. So please be encouraged. You are going to come out a better person at the end of this journey. There is no doubt about it. If you can hold on to Jesus, he is the anchor of your soul. He's the anchor of your family. He's the anchor of your income. He's the anchor of your health. He's the anchor of every part of your life. If you can hold on to him. So be encouraged. It's a great day today. It's going to be a great day tomorrow. And no matter what you're facing right now, Jesus Christ is on the throne. And it's an awesome thing. And he is in absolute control of everything that's happening. You know, maybe this morning you're listening to this, or not this morning, maybe today. I'm so used to doing this in church. But maybe today you are listening to this and you're thinking, you know, I don't know if my life is built on the foundations of Jesus. 
Well, we want to make sure today. We really want to do that. And I'm not sure where you are uh, coming in from or you're listening to this from, but everyone is welcome to come to Jesus. No matter what, who, your background, it makes no difference today. At the end of uh, this time, you're going to see uh, some email addresses coming up. We would love you to uh, communicate with us. Let us know if you pray this prayer. Now, in a moment, I'm going to get you to pray a prayer with me to ask Jesus to become the foundation of your life. Um, you might say, how does that happen? Well, very simply, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on a cross for you some 2,000 plus years ago so that your instability would be founded with his stability. In other words, he will achieve everything that you can't achieve. He will bring everything into your life that you can't do in your own strength. And all he desires of you is for you to give your life to him, to, to, to surrender to him. Say, Jesus, I can't do this on my own. I've tried to do it in my own strength. I'm sorry for walking away from you and not allowing you to be the the Lord of my life. I choose now to give you my life. Take control. Take control. And if you will pray this prayer this morning, then then by the Holy Spirit of God, by God, he will come in and he will enter your life and be a part of it. So how about we pray this prayer? And when you have prayed this prayer, please let someone know or email these addresses so we're aware of it and we can get back to you and congratulate you on such a great decision. So let's pray this together. Lord Jesus, we thank you today that you are the only foundation. I choose now to give you my life. I ask forgiveness for trying to do this in my own strength. I surrender to you. Thank you now for your love, your joy, and your peace that fills my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, please let us know. We would love to hear from you. It would be great. And you'll see the uh, addresses come up here for you to get in contact with us. Don't forget, straight after this, We are going into our Zoom prayer time. Basically, if you have a prayer need, you'd love us to pray for you. It could be anything. We would love to be able to do that. We're going to have some pastors there waiting to pray with you. So God bless you. Can't wait to speak to you again next week. And uh, don't forget, Jesus is still on the throne. Nothing's changed. God bless you guys.